In this video, we will be going over the submenus in the system setup. From any status screen, you can press Enter Menu, and Enter Menu enters you into the programming mode. Next and Previous allows you to scroll up and down within the screen. And Enter Menu will allow you to proceed within the subscreens. So let's go ahead, go ahead and hit Enter Menu. Now the first item on the list is Cool Heat Stages. And let's go ahead and go into the Cool Heat Stages. Now, the Cool Heat Stage screen allows you to select the amount of cooling and heating stages that you intend to use. If we were to go ahead and hit Previous or Next, this rotates us between the Cool Stages and the Heat Stages. So, for example, if you go ahead and choose three cooling stages, then the remainder of the programming, only three cooling stages will be displayed. If we were to toggle down and go to Stage Width or Stage Separation, this is the number of degrees between each stage, and typically it would be one or two degrees. Now let's go ahead and go back and go to the next option. Now the next option is set up dead bands. Enter menu to get inside. Now we have the cool heat, relative humidity, and bottom heat dead bands. Now dead band or hysteresis band is the number of degrees the temp needs to drop from the lower boundary of its current stage before it switches to the lower stage. Dead bands prevent equipment from cycling and stages from changing frequently. A typical dead band might be between 1 and 2 degrees, but the dead band must always be smaller than the stage width. The relative humidity dead band, this is the percentage humidity must drop below the dehumidification threshold before exiting the dehumidification state and vice versa with humidity. Bottom heat dead band is the number of degrees that the bottom heat temperature must rise above the bottom heat temperature set point or threshold before the heat valve switches off. Typical values might be 1 degree Fahrenheit or less. Let's go ahead and hit back. And next we're going to go to setup location and go ahead and hit enter menu. Now the iGrow 1400 has an internal astronomical clock and by knowing the actual latitude and longitude coordinates, sunrise and sunset times can be precisely calculated. And you can look up these coordinates by googling your city or your location and it will provide you these coordinates. And then all you have to do is input them in. Go ahead and hit back. and. We'll go ahead and go to Outputs Control. Now, Outputs Control has several different features. It has rain hold time, command delay, irrigation mode, and irrigation delay. Now, the rain hold time is the parameter that lets you choose how long you want the rain override condition to persist after the rain status goes from yes to no. This is to keep the intermittent rain from causing the vents to keep opening and closing. Now command delay is the time between commands to change the equipment's states. It's the shortest time permitted for switching equipments. Typical update times are from one to two minutes and this parameter is used to minimize the cycling of equipment. Now irrigation mode and irrigation delay applies if you program more than one irrigation valve to trigger based on accumulated light or a dry contact switch closure or if you selected the cycling misting option. If you select concurrent, the valves will turn on immediately when requested regardless of how many valves are already on. If you select sequential, then the first valve will turn on but the other valves are to come on, but they will wait in a queue, and each one will come on in sequence. Irrigation delay. Now, irrigation delay forces a user to 
establish a predetermined delay between the valves. In other words, when the current on valve goes off, the next valve in the queue will wait the predetermined minute and second before it turns on. We're going to hit back. Next we're going to go ahead and skip setup inputs because we'll go over it in a later video. Same with calibrate inputs. Now date and time history, time for instance, adjusts the current time. The highlighted field allows you to scroll through the whole 24 hour period by hitting plus or minus. Now the date, you would do the same. By pressing enter to go from field to field, you could change the parameters and even the day changes as well. Now daylight savings if you want the program to automatically adjust itself for daylight savings time, all you would do is select yes or you'd select no. Now log history allows you to choose how often the controller will log sensor and equipment history information. Log history can be saved and changed to different lengths of time. If you put zero, then the controller will save information every second. Go ahead and scroll down to system units. Now in system units, you can choose either Fahrenheit or Celsius. Wind speed, you can choose either miles per hour or you can choose kilometers per hour. Now light, you could, ch you could either choose watts per meter square or you could choose clucks. Now our 1600 controller allows you to also choose micromoles as well for light units. And then we're going to go ahead and skip communications because it's going to be in another video. And we're going to go ahead and go to fallback settings. Now fallback settings is used if there is an in-temp sensor failure and you want the controller to fall back to use the backup sensor, which could be an out-temp sensor or any other sensor that you have defined in the setup inputs selection. If this is enabled, the controller will automatically detect the in-temp sensor failure and fall back to the backup sensor. If it's disabled, then there is no action to utilize a backup sensor and the iGrow 1400 will engage the Force 2 condition to come into effect. Now, the Force 2 option is used in case of a fallback failure scenario. If the fallback is disabled, the third level of safety is the The Force 2 is in now the force two is in case of a fallback failure scenario or if fallback is disabled this is the third level of safety which forces the iGrow 1400 into any stage automatically in the example screen above the 1400 would engage whatever equipment you have assigned to beyond and here it's at the normal condition. In other words, if you want the aggro to force to cool one or cool two, this field will allow you to make those changes and if the conditions occur, the controller will force to cool two according to this scenario. We're going to go ahead and go past advanced settings and smart cool factors because these will be in later videos and you hit back to save your options and that's our system setup video